Hello, this is Miss Francis again. Today I would like to teach you about the main basics that have to deal with the parts of the theater and the stage in our auditorium at Prescott and that also applies to any other theater that you might go to in America and in your future. So let's get started. First off, I would like for you to know the difference between being on stage and being off stage. If you are on stage, you are viewable by the audience and you are most likely performing. If you are off stage, you are in the backstage area and you are not viewable by the audience and you are not performing. Off stage could also include waiting behind a prop or hiding behind a piece of the set, what's called the set. The set is what we refer to as the actual structures that show a setting for the musical. For instance, in a show called Oklahoma, there is a house that is used as the set. And you can hide behind that house and be technically off stage when the audience doesn't see you. It's easy to remember off and on stage because if you are on stage, you have to be on it. Your character is on. Okay, if you are off stage, you can turn your character off and be resting. In a certain area of the off stage is the backstage area where we have costume rooms and dressing rooms. The costume rooms hold all of the costumes, the outfits that the performers use for the musical, for, for the show. That's called a costume. Their costume hangs up in the costume room they take their costume and take it with them into the dressing room where they get dressed. So our dressing rooms are located inside of our costume rooms at Prescott. Another offstage area, backstage area that performers use is waiting behind a black curtain to enter. I told you that they could wait behind a piece of set. They can wait behind a curtain and most of these curtains are black and there are several different types of them. And when they are waiting behind one of these black curtains, they are said to be waiting in the wings or waiting in the legs. The black curtains are often referred to as the legs of the theater or the wings. So if you're hiding behind one of those black curtains, you can say you're waiting in the wings. Now I said there were several different types of black curtains. The two primary types that we have are half runners and full runners, and they're pretty self-explanatory. Half runners only cover half of the stage, so they only run for half of the stage. Full runners completely cover the entire line of the stage. So that's the difference, half runners and full runners. Another curtain that is used to hide performers is the biggest, heaviest curtain that we have and that most theaters have, and it is at the very, very front of the stage. And it is called the Grand Drape. So it's easy to remember because it drapes down from the ceiling and it is grand because it is the biggest, it's the heaviest, it's typically the most expensive. It has weights in the bottom of it to keep it in place. When it's pulled, it's very heavy and it shakes, but it shakes less because it has weights in the bottom of it. So that is the grand drape. Grand drapes are typically red, but at Prescott ours is blue because Prescott colors are blue and green, so they just chose to go with blue. Pause for a minute for history time. History time! I don't know why I need to do that, but anytime there's the history time, it's just like, history time! So history time. The reason why in history it is said that the typical color of a grand drape is red is because back in the old days, like a long time ago in the old days, back in Shakespeare's time when there were kings and queens in Europe, the kings and queens would have performances done for them and they would not go to a theater. They wouldn't have to. They would have a theater in the palace, in the castle that they are living in. So they would just go down to that room. And the most expensive color to make at that time, the royal color was purple. So the theaters in the castle had a purple curtain. Okay, so royalty was purple. Well, the peasants, you little peasants, could not afford purple to make that purple dye, which was usually made out of like snails. It's gross, I know. But like crush up snails. Yeah. 
but they would make that dye and the peasants could not afford that color. So the closest thing that they could get to was red. So, history time. That's why we have red curtains. Now there is this invisible line that runs on the bottom of the stage across the grand drape, and that's called the proscenium arch. Say that three times fast. Proscenium arch, proscenium arch, proscenium arch, proscenium arch. Yeah, it's pretty cool, pretty cool word. So the proscenium arch is this invisible line that is at the bottom of the stage, it goes across and makes an arch where the grand drape is in that general area. Now, if you were sitting in the audience and you were an audience member and you were sitting in the audience right now, perhaps in my class, then you are sitting in the area that's called the house. So we also call the audience the house. And so you'll typically hear me say quiet in the house. Most teachers just say, shh, let's be quiet. And sometimes I'll do that too. But a lot of the time I'm used to just saying quiet in the house because it's a saying that we use because that's addressing all of the audience members. So sometimes you'll hear me say house. Above the house are the house lights. So just like the lights in your house turn on and off, we have on and off switches for these lights as well. And those are the lights above the audience members, directly above the audience in the ceiling that are draping down from the ceiling are the house lights. Also in the ceiling is another type of lights and these are actually above the house lights in the very top in the rafters of the ceiling and those are called spotlights and they put a spot one spot of light onto a performal but idea ideally you would put several spots on a performer and so you'll have several lights on a performer to light them up very well on stage so they're very clearly seen by the audience so the spotlights are actually above the audience members above the house lights up in the ceiling in a special place that we call the catwalk. Okay, it's pretty cool. I'm not sure why they call it catwalk. I was told that perhaps it's because only cats can climb up there. But you also have catwalk as a reference to modeling and the models walk on the catwalk, on the catwalk. And that's a like runway. So use that term there too. But either way, the catwalk is where the spotlights are kept at Prescott. Now, if you move to the stage and you're standing on the stage and you look out above the audience, you can see the catwalk and you can see the spotlights. But if you look above you, you also see more lights. And those lights are called backlighting. So we also have backlighting. So that's another light that we can shine on our performers. A backlight and a couple of spotlights and they're going to be good to go. The audience will clearly see them. But backlighting also is easy to remember because it can actually shine on the back of the performer. So if you look up, there are lights here, but if I moved forward, they'd be shining on my back. So there are also lights behind me. They could also be shining on my back. So that is backlighting. On that back wall, you will also see that we have a projector. Our projector is from the back wall instead of the back of the auditorium. It's called a rear projector because our screen comes down and the projector is actually behind. So it is a rear projector and we have a huge screen that comes down that we typically use for backdrops. Now you may be wondering, what are backdrops? Backdrops are used to display a certain scene. Now before I said you could use a piece of set to display a scene. So you might have a house on stage for Oklahoma as I mentioned before. But in the background, you would have a piece of cloth a drape that has been painted to display the town of Oklahoma, I mean the city of Oklahoma, and the town that it takes place in. Okay, so in the background you would have that. Another example would be like if we were doing Little Mermaid, and Ariel went under the sea, under the sea, and she went under the sea, so the backdrop would need to not display Oklahoma, it would now display underneath the surface, underneath the water surface, in the sea. So that is a backdrop. Now, we don't hang backdrops at Prescott. We use our rear projector to reflect an image on our screen, so we use that as our backdrop. How does it rain? 
going to go on and talk about the actual stage floor itself. The stage floor is divided into different parts. There are actually nine of them, but they're not that hard to remember. You're like, oh my goodness, there's nine? It's not that bad. So we're going to go through each of those. It's kind of like um, the basketball court or a football field. You've got the 15-yard line, the 40-yard line, basketball courts. You've got specific places where you get certain points for shots. It's the same kind of thing, and there are parts of the stage where the actors can travel to. They write these parts of the stage down in their scripts, the book that has all of their lines for the show, and they remember where they're supposed to go at a certain part in a song or in a certain part in a scene where they are acting out some lines. So these different areas are very important for actors and actresses to remember where to go. So we're going to cover each of them now. The very front of the stage is pretty easy to remember because it's called the apron and what does your mother or father wear at the very front of their person when they are cooking? An apron. Okay, so the very front is the apron, but then if you walk behind the grand drape, you're on the down stage. Walk even further back to the back wall and you are on the upstage area. Now, left, right, and center are a little bit tricky. Center is pretty self-explanatory. If you're in the very center of the stage, you're in center stage. Yeah, but if you move to the right or left, it's always from the performer's perspective. So if I start to move to the right, I'm on the right stage, stage right, okay? If I move to the left, I'm on left. But if you're an audience member, it's gonna be opposite your perspective and you're gonna be like, what? Because your left is not my left and your right is not my right. So you gotta know, it's always from the performer's perspective. Now on the stage itself, we have props and pieces of set. A prop is something that the actors will use and carry with them, such as the umbrella from Mary Poppins. Okay, that is a prop. That's different from a piece of set because that's not showing a location. Mary Poppins can take that anywhere with her. Okay, that's the difference between a prop and a piece of set. A piece of set would be like a house, the actual physical house, the actual physical bedroom that Mary Poppins is in. But she's using this bag and this umbrella to do magics, for instance. And so that is a prop. Now also on the stage, you will see that Prescott has these big, tall, black structures that are called shells. The shells are used to reflect sound out to the audience. Okay, we also have shells that are on the walls of the auditorium that are those gray square things. Those also reflect sound to the audience, but they also keep sound from going out into the hallway. So that's really awesome that we have both of those things to help really enhance the sound and acoustics, what's called acoustics, in the auditorium. <music> Lastly, you might be wondering where all of the lights and the sound are controlled or changed or manipulated. And that is done at the very, very back of the house, which is above past the audience super far away from where you're probably sitting but the very back of the theater you have across from the back wall you have the control booth the control booth has a soundboard and a light board it's super fun and complicated and if you're in my technical theater class we're going to go over some specifics with that so you get an idea of how that is used during a show but you also can control the house lights back there as well. So you've got house lights, backlights, spotlights, all of the microphones, everything is controlled from there. Now, if you are in my in-person class, we are gonna walk through all of those areas we just talked about.